don't offer list price. Ask for credits. Buy downs. Work with the mortgage professional. Figure it out. Get stuff fixed. Write disrespectful offers. Do the work. I look at days on market over 30 days. Just get get jiggy with it, man. It is going to be a great time to buy if you have the right mindset. And if you know seller financing, even better. You've heard me talk about a buyer's market returning to the housing and real estate market. We're going to dig into and really talk about how to take advantage of a buyer's market. We are also going to ask the non-theoretical question of what happens when rates decline, because we have seen chief economists at Goldman Sachs and other places talk about perhaps having 200 basis points in rate cuts over the next 12 months. So in order to have this conversation, we're going to talk with Casey from Brick by Brick Wealth, and we're going to start with how to take advantage of a buyer's market. What say you, Casey? You think I'm really excited about this. I don't remember the last time we've been in a buyer's market. I feel it's like the last time was like when I lived in California. I don't remember a buyer's market, and I've been here like 11 years in yeah, Tennessee. I think, you're, I don't, I think you're right. I don't remember me being in a buyer's market. So I want no, yeah, yeah this is I important. Just bought a dang house last week, but oh, you did! Congratulations, yeah. congratulations! Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you're absolutely right. The last buyer's market I remember was like 2012, 13, 14, depending on how you look yep. at it. Um, so yeah, it's been certainly more than a decade. So there's a lot of people that follow you and I that don't know any market but a seller's market. That's right. Um, buyers' markets are really interesting because I've been through a few of them now, and. You know what makes a buyer's market special? Really two things. One is it's when you can get your best deals, when you can get really stinking rich. But second, it's almost it's almost comical how many people run away from a buyer's market instead of run to it. I've had the least amount of competition in buyer's markets. I've done the best deals in buyer's markets. It's just wild for me to think about. So I too am very, very excited for what's coming. Yeah. I mean, isn't that what people want? People, you know, where everyone's waiting for the buyer's market. They're waiting for the sellers to just want to take our deal. And then everybody <laughs> runs away. <laughs> it is, it's funny. So to me, like the, the most exciting thing about a buyer's market is that you can get your best deals. Just like you said, you can buy your best deals. I don't think I've ever bought a house in a buyer's market. Oh, it's good. It is I mean, so good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when did I buy my house? I guess 2013. So missed that. Um, yeah. So it would be really exciting. I remember I was a real estate agent back then during the buyer's market in California. And it and I was a buyer's agent. So that was really fun. Um, but I would say for everybody that's out there that is excited about the buyer's market, um, take advantage of just making tons of offers. Don't don't be so quick to waive your your contingencies. Don't be too quick to offer asking price. Remember, if the properties have been on the market for a period of time, even seven days, it could be a new listing seven days. It doesn't mean that they're going to get tons of offers right away. You can have your agent call and check and see what's going on. But I would want to like hoard all the things, right? I'm going to ask for two or 3% closing costs, depending upon what I'm buying. I'm not going to, you know, give them my best offer up front. I'm going to negotiate in the inspection period. I'm going to ask the seller to fix things. I'm also going to ask the seller to give me money off the purchase price. And I'm also then going to ask for closing costs if I haven't already done so in the beginning. I'm going to do all those things. I'm going to try and squeeze every little bit that I can out of the seller, just like what we did with the property that we just closed on earlier this week, or I guess last week. Um, we bought the property for $40,000 under list price, which I was super excited about. We offered less in the beginning. I asked for 2% closing costs because that's all I could get because it's an investment. They gave it to me and I asked them to fix things and I asked them for more money off during the inspection period. So I just kept asking, asking, asking and it was yes, yes, yes. So they didn't have any other offers. They were on a timeline to close and I was their saving grace. I was the offer. They had to, they didn't want to give me all that stuff, but they wanted to move on with their life, close on their other property. And that's what you're going to get. Now they could have told me at any time, no, we're not gonna give you these more th other things. We have all these other offers, backup offers, where it can take one of those instead, but they didn't have the backup offers and that's a buyer's market. 
So no, I'm, buy- I'm stoked. Yeah. So I'll, I'll say a couple of things about buyer's markets. Um, first off, if you're following us, we, we don't offer list price. We just, we just don't, in a buyer's market, you don't do that. Uh, figure out, work with your mortgage professional, figure out what's the max credits you can get, two points, go get it. Do inspections, ask for credits, get the stuff repaired. It's the it's the time. And oh, by the way, if you really are getting good at this, seller financing is going to skyrocket, right? Because some sell, and again, people don't, people don't realize this. There are some markets where you, their houses don't sell and they have to. This is the, the beauty of a buyer's market is if you do the work, motivated sellers will be found. You found a motivated seller. They had to say yes, yes, yes. Not because they wanted to, but because they wanted to move on with their life. That's the beauty of a buyer's market. And in a seller's market, we have motivated sellers. They just hide, right? They're just swarm. They don't have to tell you. They take, you know, they, it's just, I am so excited about this buyer's market. Most people haven't seen one in a, in a decade. No, they haven't. And a lot of the students that I work with, they're younger. They were in like high school or whatever. They were yeah. in college. They were not thinking about investing. They didn't have money to invest. And so all yeah. they know is the struggle of a seller's market, the struggle. And yeah. this is just going to be so much easier. I don't know how long it's going to last, you know, but yeah. um, everyone should be taking advantage. If you're, if, if you're sitting on the sidelines, this is the time that you've been waiting for. This is Absolutely. it right now, between now and December, in my opinion, this is the time everyone's been waiting for it to get in. Yeah, it's really funny. I'm actually I I I originally said December, but I've actually moved it out to January 31st uh as as the kind of my ballpark for uh the buyer's market. It could go longer, but let's play this yeah. out. Actually, meet Kevin uh was being interviewed or actually yeah, being interviewed by Ryan Pineda. Uh, I saw that video over the weekend. This is Meet Kevin's opinion, not mine, but we're going to play with this to kind of pivot. Meet Kevin sees a buyer's market much like us for the next 6-7 months. At which point, me, Kevin goes as far as to say, not only we're going to get 200 basis point cuts, like Goldman Sachs says, we're going to go back to the zero bound, which to be clear, I think is crazy, but let's just play with this argument. If rates get cut, it get cut in a big way. What do you think happens, Casey, if mortgage rates are suddenly 4%? Goes back into a seller's market. That's what happens. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. That'd be devastating. I mean, I, I hope they don't do that, but I mean, it's election time and, you know, I hate to make things political, but it has a lot to do with everything. And we can't be naive to think that it doesn't. And there is no reason why rates should be cut right now. There's no reason. The only reason is that people want to get reelected and they want to have something to talk about come November. Yeah. I, I, you know, I agree with, with me, Kevin, I don't agree that we're going to cut rates to zero, but I do agree with the, if we cut to zero, this happens. Oh, and, for sure. and, and I don't want that. The housing market is just starting to heal with six and a half, 7% mortgage rates. And unfortunately, if you're in the business, it's slow out there, right? Where we did less than 3.9 million annualized transactions. I get it. It's slow, but man, we, we had all that appreciation in two or three years. It's supposed to be slow. Housing is not supposed to go up 20% in a year or 12% or whatever it did. Um, Historically, it's 1% or 2% above inflation. And if it does, if the the worry is if interest rates go down, all that we worked so hard for and struggled through is for nothing. Yeah. Because it's just going to get harder. I mean, if we're talking about housing on affordability, just kiss it goodbye. Like it's over. It's just over. It's we're on like this, this, we're on the ledge right now of, of future children not being able to buy properties because the housing prices have just gotten so high in the past few years and people's wages haven't increased, not to mention this exorbitant inflation that's making everything cost more. I'm sure people's credit card bills are getting higher. There's just no way. I think that the American people are struggling and we're seeing some like relief right now and things are kind of getting back to normal and somewhat regular and we're going to have these rate cuts and it's just going to blow up the real estate industry. We're going to have prices soar. Everyone is going to buy prices. Just imagine prices soaring again, prices soaring again. It's just, you know, it sounds, the low interest rate sounds good, but 
not really when you think about what happens when interest rates do go down. It's just not a good thing. It's, it's not time for that right now. No. Yeah. You know, again, I think meet, meet Kevin's idea that we're going to go back to the zero bound is, is somewhat misguided. Not impossible by any means. What do I know? Uh, maybe it's more wishful thinking that we don't go there. But even if we just go down 100 basis points or, or heaven forbid, 200 basis point, like I think Goldman's talking about, that still gets us mortgage rates around 5%. And that might yeah. be too low. Um, That's too low. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, pretty even wild. a little bit, even a little bit. I, Every time they go down, goes down just a little bit, people come out of the woodworks, you know, because we've just had so, so high interest rates. And I think with the election coming up, people are kind of freaking out and not sure what to do. And I know people ask me all the time through Instagram, should I wait till after the election? Should I wait till next year? Just there's so much uncertainty right now. I don't know. So people are on the sidelines, but nothing like a low interest rate to pull people back in. You know, I mean, it's funny you bring this up. 5% rate would be insane. Yeah, it's funny you bring this up. I'm hearing more and more people, because again, I talk to agents, lenders, business owners every week on this channel, and a lot of them are hearing, I'm going to wait till after the election. And that was really the basis for my call a month ago about the second half being remarkably slow. It's because the consumer is predictable. Now, when you, th- when you step back and look at it logically, like what's really going to happen after the election? Well, one of them is going to get elected. Does anything really change? Not really. I mean, not really. But at least we have certainty. Right now, for the next 100 days, I think I think the election's 100 days away, thereabouts. Um, you're just going to see consumers pull back. And I mean, on everything. They're not going to buy homes. They're probably not going to buy cars. It's like, I'm scared. I'm mad. I'm pissed off. I'm out. I'm out. Get this damn election over with. I, and that crazy. is why right now is the best time to buy. This is the best. This and I sound like a used car salesman when I say this is the best time to buy, but it really is right now through the end of the year. Actually, in my opinion, really is the best time to buy. People are not buying properties. It's a this little buyer's market that we have right now. Interest rates are still good. They're good. You know, the yeah, fifty-year it, average it, is like what seven percent. They're good. Yeah. yeah. You just make sure you, again, right? In our audiences, don't offer list price. Ask for credits, buy downs, work with the mortgage professional, figure it out, get stuff fixed, write disrespectful offers, do the work. I look at days on market over 30 days. Just get get jiggy with it, man. It is going to be a great time to buy if you have the right mindset. And if you know seller financing, even better. Everybody has their own little market, right? Every every market, little tiny sub market is a little bit unique, a little bit different than the one next door. So the more offers that you make, the better you'll feel about what offer price to make for the next offer. So I understand a lot of people will make one offer and they'll make it way too low and say, you know, no one took my offer. Okay, well, maybe try a little higher the next time. But you won't know the sweet spot of how much to offer below if you're not making tons of offers. You just have to make offers so you can figure out where in your little sub market the sweet spot is. Yeah, I love it. Again, it's all about focus, daily discipline. Don't believe the hype. Again, if you want to make great deals, lower prices, better terms, it's a buyer's market. If we get lower rates next year, that buyer's market could be over in a blink of an eye. So please do the work, do the work, do the work. Casey, where can people find you? People can find me every day on Instagram, Brick by Brick Wealth, and YouTube, Brick by Brick Wealth. Awesome. Thank you so much.